Hi guys, this is Arvo from the product team. Um, really excited to announce a new feature we've just launched, versioning for flows and folders. You know, a lot of people have asked us um, for the capability to basically treat their flows and all the metadata that's associated with it akin to code uh, using modern versioning system, backup system, and restore mechanisms like you might see with something like GitHub. And so by using our own product, we've actually launched a new feature that allows you to back up either on an on-demand or automated basis, your flows to GitHub. And this template will effectively be working, walking you through how we can do that. Cool. So after you've downloaded the template from, your, um, from the templates feature, um, versioning for flows and folders, you'll see three flows. You'll see the um, flow we actually want to version. It's basically a notification flow here, which I'll show you. It's pretty, pretty basic here. When a user is created, um, send an email. We actually have two flows here, only one of which we'll going, be going through. The first, which is exporting a flow and making a commit directly in GitHub, and then exporting a flow and opening a PR in GitHub. You can think of it as opening a, a PR as sort of a more advanced version of making a commit directly. Um, and so if, if you wanna go down that path, you're definitely feel free to, but um, we're gonna be going through the more simpler version. And sort of as a prerequisite, you wanna have a GitHub account set up. You can see here that I've actually created um, a workflows backups repository that I have the ability to make commits directly to. Um, and so you'll need a have a repository set up that you can actually go in, and create a connection to. Cool, so let's go to the flow. You can see here that the, this trigger is actually on demand. It's just a child flow stub right now. So at the end of this, we'll test it. Um, but you can replace this with a schedule flow if you like. And the way this flow works is effectively that we created these new cards called export flow and export folder. This takes a flow, which you, you can see here is the um, notification flow that I just showed you. It has some options like the formatting of it. Do you want it to be pretty printed or not? And it now supports an exported flow, which is a file format or format file. We then want to choose a name for the flow. We then um, want to make a commit message. And then finally, we want to actually go and update file content. So if that update fails, and we know that the, the file doesn't already exist, and we'll go ahead and create a new file. Cool. So let's go through this and go through the setup process. So the first thing that I have is I've selected the flow here. Um, so th that one's already selected, which is great. Um, I want it to be pretty printed and want two spaces. Second, let's just choose another file name here than the export of flows. It's kind of boring. So we'll just say, you know, X, let's say notification flow. And it does need to end with this dot flow file format um, because we are using the export flow card. If it's a folder, then it would be the dot folder file extension. We then have a commit. Look, my, I made a commit using Act Workflows. I want to change that. And then finally, let's set up the connection. We'll create a new connection. We'll say Arvel's GitHub. Create. To sign in. I'm going to authorize. Let's see. I don't remember my password. Perfect. Now let's go back. It's actually going to be a repo not in one of my orgs. So this is actually a repository that I own myself. Sometimes it takes a while since there's a large number of repositories here. Come on. Perfect. I'll go back to workflows backups here. That's the repository that I want to commit to. And then I'll just use the default branch here. Cool. 
Awesome. So you can see here actually that there's three inputs, the message, commit message, the actual file content, and the path. The path is actually important in that um, I'm actually just creating a file directly to uh, the main root folder, which you can basically see here, there's no folders. If you wanted to make it to a folder, you'd simply have the path that would be like folder name slash something like that. Cool. And now let's make sure that the if error card is set up properly. Not an org. We'll have to wait for these repositories to load once again, unfortunately. backups, default branch, same set of inputs, and you can see that they actually are perfectly configured. Let's save this finally. Export flow, make commit to GitHub, save data. Cool. So I think we should be all set and ready to go here. Finally, let's turn the flow on and let's go ahead and test. Okay, so it's trying, it actually failed here. Let's go through the if error. So we actually see that we did create the file content. You can actually see here that the commit message is there, the path, etc. So if I go to my, my repo, I can actually go ahead and say, hey, cool, perfect. So exported flow is actually, that's the wrong one. Um, Notification flow dot flow. Perfect. So you can actually see here all of the metadata. So um, we're definitely looking to improve like the readability of this, but um, the really cool thing is not the, you know, detail around the flow metadata, which is very long for such a simple flow, but it's really what happens when you update this flow. So now let's go back to flow and let's go to the actual flow that we're looking to version. Because versioning really is valuable like when something changes and you want some persistence for what happened. Now, let's say this. Let's say we want to update the metadata. This is an updated version of this Compose card. And let's say, for example, that you want to swap out the event card. Instead of user created, let's say that we want it to be when an API token is created, for example. And let's say, let's take out this note for whatever reason. Cool, let's save this, save. Now let's go ahead and run my versioning flow again. Imagine this was like a monumental change for your guys' environment. We can actually come back here to the flow and we can click test again. So this last try if error card should actually succeed now that we've found the actual file, we've actually updated file content. Let's come back here. Let's refresh. If I go to notification flow, you can see actually that I didn't, um, actually didn't see a new file get created. But the cool thing is if you go to history, you can actually see now there's two commits to this file. I can actually look at the last commit. And this is what's really cool. You can actually see what was changed, what was deleted. And so by going through this, you know, you have a way directly to the metadata of the flow definition itself, basically to see what changed. And you can use commit messages effectively to say, hey, you know, who changed it even? Or what was the change that was made? Um, so that's just a basic demonstration for making a commit directly. If we kind of go back to home and we look at what else is in the folder, um, you have a more advanced version of this where instead of making a correct commit directly, you basically create a branch and then open a PR um, basically within that branch, which then can be merged you know, after some sort of peer review. So you can think of this as just sort of an extension of the flow that we've walked through. Okay, cool, hopefully that was useful. Thanks for watching.